So welcome back to Spray River Homestead. Uh, we're going to continue talking about our meat rabbit series today. And this part of the series, we're actually going to look at the physical rabbits and show you what you need to be looking for before you bring home your breeding stock. So what I've got today to use, um, I do a bunch of different breeds, but we're going to look at Champagne D'Argents because they actually are a meat breed. And though these guys are a little bit older, they're still in good enough physical condition to be able to show us what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to be showing you how to sex the rabbits and health issues to look for. And also just overall body proportions that make good meat rabbits. So we've got winter. Our doe is going to um, be our first example. And then we've got uh, Maximilian here who is a buck. And we're going to go through and show you on both of these animals. Now, both of them, I'll say going in, um, are getting really close to needing toenails done, so I'm sure we're gonna find that the toenails are a little long. Winters just had babies not too long ago. And Max hasn't had has his done in, the, in about, uh, about a quarter, so about three months. So we'll go ahead and pull our rabbit out and start looking at them. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do um, is you're just gonna have the rabbit set somewhere on a table, um, on a stand, something so you can just get a general overview of how the rabbit looks. Now, keep in mind that when you go out to buy rabbits, if you're buying from a true rabbit breeder, chances are you're going to meet them somewhere. Most rabbit breeders will not allow people to come to the farm. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do I know the condition of the rabbit if I don't know what it's living in? To me, if a rabbit breeder tells you you can't come to the property to look at the rabbit, it tells you that the, that the breeder is very concerned about biosecurity, and this is actually a very good thing. With the number of rabbit illnesses we have going on in the country, especially with what's going on in Canada right now, which I'll discuss in another video, um, you don't want a lot of people coming into a rabbitry. Rabbits have a pretty delicate immune system, um, so what you're probably going to do is you're going to meet them at a show at a gas station, something like that. So the first thing you'll do, Remember I mentioned in my equipment video how handy these carpet squares are. You're just gonna go ahead and set the rabbit on the table and look at it. What you're looking for is obvious. Are you look, you're looking for signs of wounds? Do we have bald spots that might indicate lice? Do we have any appendages sticking out at weird angles that would indicate a broken leg or a leg that broke that, that healed? While you've got the rabbit on the table, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna look in those ears. And what you're looking for is you're going to look for dark spots, um, stuff that looks like real heavy wax buildup, or in a severe case, stuff that's real flaky. This is going to indicate ear mites. Not something you want to bring home, even though it is pretty easy to handle if you do get it. Um, the treatment is pretty easy, but there again, you don't want to bring home a problem if you can avoid it. So you're going to look at that first. Then you're going to pull the ears forward. You're actually going to look at the fur at the base of the neck. This is where uh, fur mites are going to show up, generally. <clears throat> so you're looking for dandruff. Um, in, a, in a breed like a Champagne D'Argent where the fur is very, very dense, these guys are really prone to picking up fur mites. So if you're going to find it, you're going to find it first right here. If you don't see a bald spot, what you might see is scratches. This is where the rabbit's scratching because the fur mites are uncomfortable. If you part the hair, you'll actually sometimes see the mites which is pretty gross. The other thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and look at the fur. And while you've got them, you're just gonna feel back. If the rabbit jumps a lot, it might be a little bit more difficult, but what you're feeling for is anything that indicates a broken anything. And trust me, broken body parts on a rabbit like anything else are easy to feel. You're also gonna feel along the, the spine. And you're looking for abnormalities. Um, you're also looking to see, is this rabbit really, really fat? If you cannot feel the spine, that rabbit is very obese. That can be a really serious situation if you're trying to get them to breed, especially in your does, because if they've gotten fat along the back, they've actually got fat along their ovaries, and you don't want that. So we're going to check along his spine. Everything looks good. And you can actually check his tail for breaks, too, if you'd like. Now, I do it because as a show breeder, I need to know um, because a broken tail is a disqualification. But you, they can also have what's called a screw tail where the tail is actually, it actually physically kind of twists, um, which is a genetic problem. So you don't really want to add a genetic problem in even though you're meat breeding. 
So once we've done all that, um, you're also going to kind of look in and you're just going to look at their eyes and around their eyes. You're looking for a couple of things there as well. You're looking for drainage, which might indicate an underlying illness. And you're also going to look for shadows on the eye, which could indicate um, some severe parasite infections like E. Kunakuli, um, and a number of other things. So if you're looking for clear eyes, um, the rabbit should be moving his little nose the whole time, smelling you. But you also kind of want to look, make sure his nose isn't real wet on either side. That would also indicate an illness. So from here, we're going to flip him over and I'll get my assistant to move the camera and we'll look at him from the underside. Okay, so come here, Max. Let's get you turned over. All right, so what we're looking at when we've got him turned over is a couple of things. Again, we're going to check those front legs, make sure we don't feel any breaks. We're going to check toenails, make sure nothing's ingrown. These guys are a little bit on the long side, but not terrible. Definitely ready for a trim. Again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at his nose. Everything looks dry and good there. He's not making any wheezing noises or anything that would indicate he's got a respiratory illness. You gently lift up to look at his teeth. We were checking for malocclusion there, which will indicate a genetic issue. Everything looks good. And while we've got him, we're going to just run our hands over his abdomen, checking again for breaks, lumps, bumps, anything like that. And then we're going to check his feet. And back here, you're looking for sore hocks. Now, with Max, when I got him, he had a severe sore hocks. So he does actually still have some sore hocks scarring on his back feet. But I like to check it regularly, and he's not getting any infection in there or anything like that. Again, check toenails. And we got a couple right there that need to be trimmed. But nothing ingrown, nothing like that. You're also going to go ahead, I don't know if Kanan can see that, but because Max is a boy, we're going to go ahead and look for his scrotal sacs, which are these babies right there. Everything looks good. And then we're actually going to look at his penis. And to do that, you just pull back. Okay, everything looks good there. All right. You can take both feet. Pull them straight back. This will tell you if there's any breaks or anything in the back legs to be concerned with. So that's what we're going to look for there. And then we can flip Max back over. And he's passed our preliminary examination. Okay, now on your dough, this is winter. There are a couple of things you're going to check that you don't have to check out on the buck. So for dough, you're going to reach your hand down and feel along her dewlap. Especially in a larger doe, your New Zealand or some of your bigger breeds that get a really heavy dewlap, which is this scruff of, of skin down here that they pull fur for for babies. Um, sometimes you'll get tumors, abscesses, and the like in there. So you really want to make sure that you do a good job. I like to feel it from the under, from right underneath the jaw. I don't feel anything funny in there. And then when we go ahead and turn her over, we're gonna go ahead and look at it again. And that's just to make sure that we're really getting it, that there's nothing going on. And then of course, because this is a doe, when we sex her, we're looking to make sure that everything is healthy, pink, or even a deep flush red purple, which would indicate she's ready to breed. A doe that's already been proven or maybe has babies, you're also gonna to wanna to look along her nipples and just make sure there's no scarring that would indicate that she's had mastitis or another problem. Okay, so we're back looking at Max again. So once you've done the preliminary health check and gotten a good feel for what kind of health the rabbit's in, remember that scale I told you to take out and, and go ahead and buy when you got your equipment? If you've got one, you might want to take it along. I'd like to tell you that every breeder is good and honest, and if they tell you it's a 10-pound rabbit, that it is. But... I have never, as a breeder, ever looked funny at anybody who's brought a scale to weigh a rabbit before they've picked it up from me. So feel free to bring your scale. Go ahead and get a valid weight on that rabbit for yourself. If nothing else, as you're learning, it'll teach you a little bit more about trying to judge a rabbit on first looks. Champagnes tend to be pretty dense. So I have a hard time because these guys have a whole different weight structure than my Harlequins, which, which are my um, preliminary breed. 
So Max here goes about 10 pounds, and I didn't actually bring my scale out, but he's been weighed here recently. Um, so once you've gotten a weight and confirmed that it is a good meat rabbit weight, and we've checked to make sure that he's not too fat, the next things you're going to do, come here, Maxie, is try and form him up a little bit into what's actually a show pose. And this, there's a lot of good videos online for it. And the reason for this is that it's going to help you identify and check the width of his loin, which is vital when it comes to breeding for meat rabbits. So you're going to try and put his toes, which Max isn't going to be terribly per, um, helpful, toes under the eyes, back feet to the hip, and kind of scrunch in. And they ought to make a nice rounded shape, kind of like that. In a meat breed, you actually want this peak to be back a little farther, but that we're talking about show rabbits. So what we're looking for, when we're looking for our meat rabbits, we're looking for a nice wide shoulder that as you run your fingers and your hand back, you don't want a lot of tapering. If your hands pinch in back here, this is where your meat is. This is where the loin is. We don't want that. So if you've got a rabbit that's considered to have a hollow loin where you really pinch in as you go, it's probably not a good meat breeder. Now, as stock gets older, a lot of times they will start to hollow out. So if you're looking at a three-year-old breeding buck, you might get a little hollow. That doesn't mean he's not a good buck. If in those cases, I would ask to see offspring and to get a better feel for it. But like I said, you want to you want that width through the shoulders to really come all the way back. You also don't want them to undercut and pinch in a whole lot in the back because that can affect your leg muscling here, but also your length of your loin, okay? So remember, most of your rabbit meat is right here. This is the loin. So from here to here, and then these back legs. So if you get a rabbit and he's really got just really thin back legs, probably not a good meat breeding candidate. Same with the hollow loin, not a good candidate. But if everything else looks good, you're happy with the size, then you might just have found yourself some breeding stock. Okay, so that's your buyer's guide for choosing your new meat rabbits. Now remember what you're looking for. You're looking for good health, no parasites, uh, good clean reproductive organs, and a good nice meaty frame. A good personality sure does help. So um, if you have other questions, feel free to leave them into the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as we can. And that's it this week from Spray River Homestead, and we'll see you next time.